Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing Legend, book one of the Draenei series by David Gemmel. This review will be spoiler free, however, I will be in a discussion of Legend with my friend AP Canavan on his channel, A Critical Dragon. So stay tuned for that if you have read Legend and you want to hear some discussion of the details, the spoilers, and all of that great stuff. But for now, we're keeping this spoiler free. Now, you can actually read Legend as a standalone. I mentioned that it's part of the Draenei series, the first book that Gemmel wrote, although I'm not sure about the chronology. I think maybe he wrote some uh, books later on that take place before Legend, but it is the first one that was published. And it also can, as I said, it can be a standalone. It also can be a great, what we call around here, palate cleanser. So if you've been reading a lot of longer, bigger, epic fantasy, this is actually a pretty quick read. Uh, it is the story of a siege. And as one of my viewers put it, it's about like, kind of like a, a full novel treatment of something like Helm's Deep. In other words, big time siege with lots of uh, lead up and the rising tension where the action breaks like a dam bursting and takes up the rest of the book. So some really great action packed stuff. It is from 1984, meaning you should expect some 80s cheese in there. <laughs> some of us who are around in the, in the 80s uh, actually kind of have a weird nostalgic love for that sort of cheese. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I have to say there are a couple aspect, aspects of the book that have not aged well, but mostly I think it stands up very well. And it is my first time reading it and I enjoyed it very, very much overall. It's just a lot of fun and it surprised me even with the humor and the brilliance of a lot of the dialogue. Also, as I said, there's some great action in here and some skillful use of tropes. I can see definitely why it is a formative read for many of my favorite fantasy authors that I read today and uh, also why so many people just admire Gemmel's writing. Now, I, I think that uh, I'll address the things that I feel have not aged that well in the writing because I can get that over with pretty quickly. And I will say that this is Gemmel's first book. So I'm sure that he improved the, his craft as he wrote more and more. Uh, and some of these uh, things that I'm talking about are more technical in nature and others are more cultural in nature. So beginning with the technical, uh, one example of the sort of clunkiness that is in Legend at times is the, I would say, abrupt perspective changes. So you suddenly are, you know, you're with one character and then boom, you're just without any warning, any shift, any break, you're in from the uh, perspective of another character. And that's common enough, I suppose, uh, with an omniscient narrator. Uh, it tends to be less common, I feel, today. And uh, I think... It feels like once you've been reading a lot of um, books where the POV sticks with one character for a longer period and that there's a, a clear demarcation when the perspective changes. Once you're used to that, going back to this maybe slightly uh, out of fashion at the moment at least, style of having the perspective change just without warning uh, in, with an omniscient narrator, it, it can feel a bit jarring, I think. And so that was one thing that um, just on a technical level, maybe uh, people, it depends on your personal taste, what you're used to reading, that sort of thing. Uh, so not really a big deal, but there was some clunkiness here and there, some moments that uh, could have been maybe better developed, uh, some transitions that were a bit rough. Uh, but overall, really, uh, I can see that Gemmel was already a very skilled writer when he wrote uh, Legend. Now about the cultural changes, uh, there are, I think, many readers today who would dislike the little bit of romance that is in Legend, mainly because it, it uh, definitely engages somewhat in that old trope of the spirited young woman who is put in her place by a strong man, sometimes even through a little bit of physical violence. Uh, I think a, a lot of people would understand that um, that's not such a popular thing. It was even used as comedy 
for most of the 20th century in films and in lots of other forms of storytelling. There's a bit of that. There's shades of that in legend. I don't think uh, Gemmell goes all out with it. In fact, you could even argue to some degree that he subverts it a little bit. Uh, but that is, that is present there. There's something to be aware of. Also, there is the Orientalism in there. Uh, the book begins with uh, using the phrase slant-eyed several times to describe the baddies, the horde that is on its way to uh, conduct this siege. And so, yeah, that's something to be aware of. Uh, probably most writers would avoid uh, phrases like that these days. Uh, however, to be fair, Gemmell also uses the phrase round-eyed to describe the more European-inspired, in other words, the Drenai characters when presenting the perspective of the Nadir, or Nadir, however you say that, uh, who are the somewhat orientalized uh, figures in the story. So just to be aware of that, I mean, I don't think most people in the 80s would have blinked at that sort of thing, but times have changed, and so to be aware of that sort of thing, uh, and perhaps even Gemmell in his later years would have been more conscious of that sort of thing himself. Uh, so I haven't read the rest of his books yet, so I will, I will find out. Uh, but what has aged well, and why legend is so beloved among so many fantasy fans? Let's talk about that, because there's a lot to say there. Let's begin with one of the things that I loved the most, the dialogue. I really enjoyed the dialogue in Legend. It was very playful, very witty, and I can see the influence on later fantasy, particularly maybe with um, writers like Mark Lawrence and Joe Abercrombie. Uh, also, perhaps some John Gwynn. Uh, definitely, I know John Gwynn has cited David Gemmell as a major influence. So, uh, yeah, the dialogue is just great. I love the very dry at times sense of humor and the interactions between that dialogue really does bring these characters to life even though they're kind of tropey a lot of the characters are very tropey uh, for example uh, the, you have the lovable rogue with a troubled past you know that that's i think we all recognize that trope when we see it but i personally feel very strongly that trope should not be a bad word that uh, handled skillfully tropes are fantastic and in fact we're here for tropes when they're handled well so it's a tool and i would say that gemmel is uh, was a skilled writer who used that tool very well uh, and i love his lovable rogues for sure <laughs> so great stuff um and in terms of those characters we can talk about that as well i felt that the characters were and, and this is not, again, this is not a criticism because you can have flat characters who are vivid and interesting and strong. And so there are a lot of tropey sort of flat characters. You know that character as soon as you meet that character and that character performs a certain function. So you have the old warrior, you have the lovable rogue, you have the young spirited maiden, you have the, the major villain bad guy, who, you know, gets into this, uh, you know, major conflict, but then there's this, this sort of uh, understanding that happens between the uh, participants in the conflict, a sort of respect that grows out of the crucible of, of combat, that sort of thing. So you get a lot of that in there, and I would say that Gemmel really handles it well, and, and it, it could be the fact that a lot of this feels even more tropey now, because a lot of other writers have since imitated David Gemmel. I don't think he made up these tropes, but... Uh, I think he probably helped to popularize a lot of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, it just it does a great job with that. Um, also, the action. This is this is a great. I mean, it's a fast read. The action goes boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's just it's a it's a wonderful concept. As I said before, the siege uh, for a fast paced, really uh, uh, dynamic, full of tension, full of great epic moments. Just a lot of great stuff. He has a lot of iconic scenes in there that people I'm sure love to talk about. I can't talk about here because I'm avoiding spoilers. But there are just certain key moments that are just absolute peaks in this story that are handled really, really brilliantly. Um, and then there are the themes. And this is, I keep saying how I love the humor, I love the action. There's some depth in here as well. And I really appreciated that. I, I love the how Gemmel handles the theme particularly of courage in the face of certain doom. And this has a lot to do with the idea of perseverance. It's a metaphor, not just, I mean, it's not about just the situation that the characters are in. It is, as I was about to say, a metaphor. It's a metaphor for life. 
how we handle mortality. And I think this is something that Gemma was thinking about a lot when he was writing this book, his own mortality. And what do you do in, when you know that death is on the horizon, when death is imminent? Do you just throw in the towel and give up? Or do you just keep fighting no matter what? Even if the outcome is certain, do you just keep going? And that is uh, a, a, a very fascinating part of the human spirit, that will to just persevere. And he handles that so beautifully. And the idea of courage and the recognition of courage, even in one's foe and the sort of respect and the recognition of one's mutual humanity in moments, at least, during conflict. That's really a, an interesting perspective shift that can happen. Because when you're trying to kill another person, uh, you're, you're not really thinking about their humanity. In fact, you're trying to reject their humanity in order to make it possible. But then there are these moments of recognition. And I think you all would recognize that in storytelling, where in the midst of conflict, suddenly you see the human being there, and there is a kind of um, a feeling of mutuality, that you're both in the same situation. Yeah, you're trying to kill each other, but you're both uh, about to be killed. And <laughs> there's a, a kind of weird bond that can grow in the midst of that. So that is something that uh, I think is handled really well in terms of the, th the thematic treatment in here. Uh, the crafting of meaning. What makes meaning in a life when you know you're not going to be around forever? When you know the end is nigh, particularly. How do you, how do you just carry on and make meaning out of that? That is something that Gemmel handles beautifully in here. And the, the, the idea of dignifying life, dignifying life through finding meaning, through also finding oneself in relationship in relationships with others, with one's comrades in arms, and even one's foe. Uh, there are these intense shared moments that only those present can understand. And so you find yourself in these moments of intensity, and you find yourself in the other, in the person standing next to you in that situation. So there's another thing that Gemmel does just beautifully in here. So there's a lot to love about legend. I am really happy that I finally read this book. So many great things to say about it. And yes, it is, uh, you know, it has aged in some ways. All, all stories do. But uh, there's just a lot to love here and I highly recommend it. And I can't wait to read more books by David Gemmel. I intend to read all the Drenai books. I'd love to read all of his, his other series. I think it's the Rigante is the other one, the, the Celtic inspired one. And Whatever he's written, I'm hoping to get my hands on it someday or other. So those are my thoughts for now on Legend. Until next time.